First thing I need to do is to create some spacers for the for the sprockets that will uh, transfer the drive to, to all all of the wheels. And I have, I have a piece of uh, plastic which I will use to create the spacer. I've cleaned up the lathe from the metal chips and uh, so I can clean it up after the plastic stuff. Yeah, I need to create 10 millimeter wide spacers and then 18 millimeter spacers. Couplings are now done. Four of them are 11 mils in thickness, and the two of them are 17 mils. And then, how does it work? Is that I set the first sprocket, then the middle one? I still need to drill the holes, but uh, you get the idea. So, two chains for this one, and then one of the wheels will be having only one. So, it for that I've made this uh, this one set there, and then the only one sprocket. That's it, drill the holes and then we are ready to assemble the wheels. Okay, there we go, the wheels are bolted back to the frame and, and uh, all the sprockets are in place. I still need to cut down some of the bolts, I didn't have 
the correct length for all of them. But as you can see in the back we have one sprocket only and in the middle one and the front one we have two. The drive will connect to the front wheel and from there it will be passed to the all, all of the wheels on the side. Adjusting the tension for the chains will be handled by moving the wheel in the slot, or actually the axle in the slot. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I haven't really given a lot of thought for the placement for the molders so far. I think it needs to be right about here, so that there is space for the other chain. I will be driving the front, probably put it a bit further, further forward, but uh, I will be driving the front wheel from this sprocket. This will be a smaller sprocket created there. And, uh, on the both sides. So I probably need to manufacture a plate here, here which will allow me to move the motor back and forth because the tensioning of this chain will be done using by moving the motor because this tensioning is needed for the for the main chain between the wheels. Okay, I had to do some space for the bits in the motor and, and I don't have a milling machine so I had the grinder was my only way to do that so that's the way it is now. I'm quite pleased with it. There's, there's some hand uh, craftsmanship still visible. The brackets for the motors are now well attacked in place and I need to strip the frame and weld them properly then. But that's the way it looks like. The other motor is still in place so you will get the idea of how they will be mounted. They can travel about an inch back and forth to get the chain tensioned. Okay, now the try mechanics are almost done. The last thing that I manufactured was this uh, sprocket for the motor end. And there's a groove there and, and uh, not a bolt used for tightening it up. I'm using the chain to align the Align the sprocket correctly. It will actually go only to the front. This is just for aligning, so I, I get a straight line. So.
things now in place. Except the one that comes from the motor to the front wheel. But uh, I'm sure you will get that it's going to go to the only sprocket that's the, the remaining. We are getting there, there is soon time for the first test drive. Now that the chains are in place, there's no reason as such why the test drive couldn't be done, except that the electronics is still missing. From they have been tested, but there they are. Anyway, next episodes will be about the class fiber works and the first test drive.